more oriented for tricking. It's going to be higher tire pressure, smaller amounts of travel, littler bikes. That's going to equate to sketch down there in the bottom. But these riders are going to be sending it on the jumps and the speed. Here we go for this next round. We got Sheila Reno on the left, Kaya Jensen on the right. Sheila Reno, third place qualifier, she would also third in Innsbruck at our last event on the World Tour. Here we go. So Shailen coming out, getting that speed right off the bat. Tuck no hander to X up. Nice. Nice one there, doing combos. You'll see riders doing up to four combos and maybe even five combos in the air at the same time. Nice job there. The more combos they do, that's more points. The more points, the more time they can get off their score. Here they come into those very sketchy turns. You hear him grabbing the brakes and those tires chattering. We have a few riders out here on a more trail-oriented bike. That is going to be an advantage towards speed and traction. Well, Reeling, sorry, Reno crossing the line first. And now that the tricks have been factored in, she ups her advantage all the way up to a 2.2. She had great comps on both of those jumps. I feel like she did maybe the same trick on both jumps. Let's take a look back. Yeah, that was the tuck no hander to X up. That is the same trick she did on the second jump, but watch the extension on the second jump. And that is something that the judges will be looking for. You can get, you, two riders can do the same tricks, but if you're higher in the air and you have better extension and it's a cleaner pull trick, you can actually advance and get higher points even doing the same trick. So Sheila and Reno grabbing the advantage, we'll get them back up to the top of the course, switch sides. Looks like we got Robin Gooms loaded up into the gate. And we just received word Alma Wigberg won't be taking this lap, so we've got a bi-lap for Robin Gooms right now. She'll get yeah. a little extra practice. Yeah, bummer to see. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what went on, but Alma Wigberg, our bronze medalist last year here in Crankworks, one of the few female riders doing big, corked out 360s. So hopefully she's healthy and we'll see her back next season. But right now, Robin Gooms is just getting a feel for this track. So, Oh, Robin get the field has court. been on fire this year. She won the last event so Robin in Austria. Getting a nice little practice in there, throwing that back foot and styling out the second jump. Yeah, one of the key things in this event, these head-to-head -head competitions, is building your day. You don't want to go too fast too soon. So right now, she needs to balance this without having a competitor and not go too slow, but also not override it and cause herself any problems. So Robin Goom scoring on a little extra practice there with that by run. We are all scoring with the opportunity to have a great Whistler trip out here. There's so many ways to spend your time out here. Let's take a look at how Damon Iwanaga has been enjoying his vacation. Man, it feels unreal to be back here in Whistler. It's been a good couple years since the last time, and I was so excited to get back here and see everyone. And it's a crazy vibe. I mean, it's like seeing your traveling family and everyone yeah. gathering together as a reunion to just have a good time. Everyone's stoked. I'm stoked. Couldn't be better. You guys cruising up for whip loss right now? Hey, yeah. We up there in a sec. The best part about whip offs is it's not a serious, serious event. It's really just about hanging out with all the boys here, getting some train laps in, and trying to get sideways as much as you can. Atmosphere for whip off is absolutely insane. Everyone's just so hyped, and it hypes you up. So you just run back to the top and try to toss a good one and get fired up and do it again. That was absolutely chaos. Came out, didn't fall, no injuries, still smile on my face, and all the boys were absolutely sending it out there. It was mind blowing. Looking forward to the rest of the week. Damon can boost. I always love watching him ride his downhill bike through a set of jumps. He goes so high. You know, there's going to be a lot of amplitude tomorrow. Make sure you join us for the finale of the Slopestyle World Championship here this season. It's Red Bull Joyride. We got all the biggest riders in the sport on the heels of maybe one of the most exciting Slopestyle contests I have ever seen, our last contest of the World Tour just a month ago in Innsbruck. So join us for Joyride tomorrow. We're gonna meet up with the men here for the round of eight in the Speed and Style action. Let's take a look back at some highlights 
from the round of 16. Number one qualifier today, in case you were curious, is that man right there on the right side of your screen, Garrett Meacham. Strong through the round of 16. We will see him in the round of eight. And look at this, Bass trying to make it happen, Alan. Yeah, a couple of riders to keep an eye on today. Riders that will be putting most of their emphasis on their day when it comes to speed. Baz currently sitting second place in that King standings, and right on his heels is Jackson Fru. So both riders making it into the round of eight. It's still up for grabs. Who's going to get second, third in the overall? I mean, that's going to be a big part of our story. We've been crunching some scenarios. So keep your eyes on Bass fans, Steenbergen and Jackson Fru, but Kate Edwards, always a crowd favorite, trying to make it through the round of 16. He's going up against the number three qualifier, David Lieb. A smooth first run, and then we had issues for Cade. Where is Cade? Where did he go? He disappeared. He had an issue, blew off the course. We'll see David Lieb cruising through. And then look at this, great to see Anthony Missouri out here. Yeah, going up against going. Dylan Crane. Anthony going huge on that first jump, and then uh -oh. right here, it looked like he was going for the knack-knack backflip, and the foot that stays on the bike on that one slipped off, and when that happens, it's downhill from there. So we will unfortunately not see Anthony Mazzari in our round of eight. He was looking so strong, good qualifying result, but Dylan Crane earned himself a spot, and he'll be going up against David Lieb in heat number three. We've got the number two qualifier and the man who finished second here in speed and style just a year ago, Bernd Winkler, going up against Jackson Fru, who has a chance to swoop second place in the King tally away from Bass Van Steenbergen, who will be going up against Peter Kaiser. Number one qualifier, Garrett Meacham, going up against Daniel Ferry. Well, obviously, Anthony Missouri, always a crowd favorite out there. One of the youngsters who was watching in 2011 when Anthony Missouri burst onto the scene was a man by the name of Emil Johansson. He had this to say about Anthony. And there was one rider that really stood out because the fact of his age, and that was Anthony, because he was 15 back in 2011. And at the time as I was watching, I was 12. And it blew me away that someone that was 15 years old could be in Whistler at Joride and be on the podium. That kind of sparked something in me. Like I was like, well, I probably won't get there when I'm 15, but let's give it a shot. That makes my, ha my hair stand up to think that, look at that, I'm not even joking, to think that, you know, Anthony was such an inspiration for Emil Johansson, basically created a monster. <laughs> Emil Johansson just proceeded to swoop out the all-time win record from Brandon Semenuk. Now he's the man to beat. Join us tomorrow for Red Bull Joyride. It's gonna be a hoot. Right now, it's all about the outdoor research, speed and style. We got a men's heat loaded up in the gate. Your number one qualifier there looking game face. Left side of your screen, Garrett Meacham, Lil Rojo from Santa Cruz County in California. Going up against Daniel Ferry, who qualified eighth and has been riding strong all day, making it into this round of eight. Yeah, looking at those qualifying times nothing is a given nothing's a gimme so you're gonna see garrett throwing down right here trying to advance onto the round of four right here in the round one here yeah you said it. nothing is a gimme i mean deteriorating course conditions you know a little bit of breeze here and there what do they have on the first jump so garrett gets that backflip bar spin to single foot can can a triple combo racking up those points see what he gets here a truck to X up. You know, we were talking to a couple of the riders and the wind is picking up. So the riders that are putting a lot of focus on the trick side of things are gonna have a little bit bigger of a battle. And then right here, look at how technical that track is. There's not much there, but I'll tell you, these riders are absolutely on the edge coming around those flat turns on these jump bikes. Garrett crossing the line, point four ahead of Daniel Ferry. Now we're going to add the trick scores in, but Garrett Meacham, Looking like he'll have the advantage going into the second run there. The number one qualifier, you know, he would love to win this event. He did in Cannes. He won speed and style in Cannes. Proved himself that he could do it. Oh, he was so corked out on that backflip bar spin, a one-footed can-can. I love the style there in slow motion from Garrett Meacham. Yeah, both riders actually drifting towards each other on that. Luckily, it wasn't too extreme. We haven't seen a collision but it is possible. A little bit of a case there. Now that's where the judges are really gonna look in and that's gonna affect the scores on the tricks. It's not a gimme that you're gonna get a specific number. Execution, amplitude, perfection, extension, all those things will definitely play a factor in those overall trick scores.
Well, bike setup is so important in this discipline. You're racing, you're trying to do tricks. Tire pressure affects speed and traction. Let's see what tires Jaden Fleming is choosing in this Max's tire check. Hey guys, I'm Jaden. We're out here for Whistler Crankworks, and this is my Max's tire check for Speed and Style. For the event this week, I've opted for Icon Front and Wear, both uh, 2.2s, the XCO compound. So I wanted a faster rolling tyre, so I opted for the smallest than a 2.2 tyre, which still has the knobs to keep you and slow you down when you need to. Tyre pressures this weekend, I'm running 45 on the front and 50 in the rear. Just want a little bit of extra grip in the front for those slippery front corners and the flat turns. So for the compound of these tyres, I've opted for the XO Max Speed. Really felt good with them, run them all season, just want to continue with that into the last round here in Whistler. The track this week's got a super fast section at the top, we are rolling super quick, but you come into the flat corners and the tech section at the bottom, we want a bit more grip, you want to be able to slow down, you want to be able to turn left to right with those extra knobs. And the Icon's a perfect mix for the both. Hope you guys enjoyed, that's my Max's tie check for the Crankworks Whistler Speed and Style. Well, talking about bike setup, talking about this course, we see some riders who lean further onto the race side doing well on this course. This is definitely a challenging one to go fast on. Yeah, definitely. Especially down at the bottom, we, we just heard from Jaden talking about needing a little bit of extra traction on that front tire for these technical flat turns. You can see from here, look at those tires. Look at Baz. He's got that big, meaty DHF on the front. He's thinking about speed. He's got his mindset. Let's see what he's got on this first jump. X up to Knack Knack. Oh! Peter Kaiser with a backflip, scissor kick, Indian air. See, Bass Van Steenberg and his rider who doesn't have very many tricks, so he has to lean onto his strengths in the speed. He's going fast right here, but Peter Kaiser's bringing up the rear, just putting on a clinic with the tricks. Yeah, not only is Peter Kaiser doing the tricks, he's actually staying a lot closer than some of the other competitors to Baz. Let's see how it all adds up. He's going fast with that fourth place qualification, but Bass Van Steenbergen, you gotta give it to him, not having very many tricks and still getting fifth place in that seeding run earlier today. Peter Kaiser is going to be the leader of this matchup as we get them re-racked back at the top, switch sides. Bass is gonna have just over a second he's gonna have to make up. One of the unique things about Baz relying on speed, he is clipped in, but he's got his feet off. So you might see him doing a little bit of a oh. shuffle before. What did you see there, Cam? Well, it was a seat grab Indian air there for Peter Kaiser. Oh. The tricks are going to be big for that one. But anyways, yeah, so kind of going back to Baz, he actually has to unclip in the air. You can see it right there. Unclips in the air and then does his trick. Unbelievably technical. I know a lot of you riders out there riding clips on the trails. Why don't you just unclip one foot and then hit a jump and tell me how easy that is. He seriously unclips in the air on the setup jump before the trick jump. And it's funny enough, Tom Van Seenberg and his younger brother, who's more of a trick rider, Rampage, slope style, he was actually doing fast plant front flips on that jump and taking his foot off on the setup before as well. So there's something about the Bass Van, or about the Van Steenbergens love taking their feet off over that setup jump. We got David Lee, the number three qualifier, going up against Dylan Crane, who made it in after Anthony Missouri crashed in their round of 16 matchup. And this is where we see a difference in bikes. Dylan Crane on that more short travel trail bike. David Lee on that slope style bike. So he's definitely focusing on tricks. But I saw Dylan doing some pretty big tricks for a guy on a trail bike. Oh, they must be doing a test drop, okay. Yeah, they're going to re-rack the gate. <laughs> <laughs> that sound gets you going. Oh, these guys, they, you know, they have racer blood when that sound like affects you to the point where your heart rate starts beating. Yeah, Alan, how do you get your focus back when you're ready to go and then you realize, oh, we got we to gotta wait a little bit longer? Yeah, you got to have a short-term memory when it comes to being a competitor. Things will happen, and there's nothing you can do about it. The best you can do is just you know, reset your mind, pretend it didn't happen, and just send it. So one thing to remind you here, joining us on the Red Bull Bike YouTube channel, we got a chat box going on. Talk to us, we're reading them. We see somebody here saying if Emil is in this, he would have a negative time with some of his tricks. That's a good point. Okay, riders, random start. Riders, ready, watch the gate. There we go, they're actually on course now. Yeah, we get both riders out, super clean. David Lee with a slight lead, coming into that trick jump. 360 triple bar spin. Dylan Crane able to get that flip off. Let's see what he's got here. 
Big double tuck no hander. So he's racking up the points with a similar trick. If you don't have too many tricks, just do the one you know twice. Yep. <laughs> coming down to this final section. This is where the trail bike that Dylan Gray's on, and he's fully <laughs> sideways coming around that last turn. Last night we saw some absolute fireworks in that exact section during yeah. the slalom race. If you joined us last night for slalom, you know exactly what Alan's talking about. That final straightaway is so haywire. I'll tell you what, it's drier today, that's for sure. Yeah, it's drier, and the riders are riding bikes that are going to be handling that a little less efficiently. Having to focus on tricks here. Yeah, let's see him come through here. Now watch that back tire right here. Full on drift. But you know what? On, in motorcycles, when that happens, they say you just get on the throttle, and it will straighten you out. You actually saw Dylan doing that. He was pedaling before the slide finished, and it just straightened him out. Put some power to that back wheel. That was a nice demonstration of some serious bike skill there from Dylan Crane. Now we got Jackson through. A lot on the line for this man right now. He's going up against the number two qualifier, the man who also got second here last year, Bernd Winkler. Well, we caught up with Jackson through earlier. We're talking about tricks. But I uh, bought myself an airbag. So the plan is to try and turn up to speed and style next year, hopefully with some style. <laughs> Yes, he's realized doing so well this season. Hey, look, I'm a crankworks guy. If I can brush up some skills, get some tricks for speed and style, could be unstoppable. He doesn't have the tricks yet. He's going to have to go real fast and pull out whatever he can from that shallow bag. Here we go, Jackson Fru and Burn Winkler on course. Burn's got some heavy tricks. Let's see what Burn's got. Backflip, double bar spin. And then Jackson Fru just turns on the afterburners. Obviously, he knows how to go fast on this course. We saw him take the gold medal last night in slalom. Coming around these final turns, so clean, so laid over. He knows he's battling against those time-deducting tricks of Bernd Winkler, our number two qualifier out here. Let's see what happens when these points get tallied up. You got to give it to Bernd, though, you know? He was staying nice and close to the back tire of Jackson Fru, all while doing big tricks. No wonder he was the second qualifier. So we got a toboggan from Jackson through a backflip double bar spin from Burned Winkler. I think it was a double truck on the second jump. Let's see. Now look at the speed there. Putting the power down through those rollers around this berm. Jackson Fru, like you said, the winner of slalom. He knows how to go fast around this course. 360, one bar spin, two bar spin. Show me the points. Yeah, and one of the things that you'll see in these trick jumps where you don't see normally in slope cell or any other trick sort of oriented competition is they're actually pedaling down the landing straight back on the speed. Well, it sounds like Rob Warner's hanging out with Jackson through in the finish crawl. What up, Rob? Okay, Jackson, I'm here with you now. So far, so good, mate. Third place in the battle for the King of Crankworks. You need to get past Baz Van Steenberg. And looks like you're off to a good start. Yeah, just trying to hold it down. I mean, I can't hang with these guys on tricks, so I'm just trying to go as fast as possible and then kind of hope it's enough. I heard you got yourself an airbag, so next winter, ne this winter you're going to be flat chat, and next year we're going to see you come out with a different trick bag? That's the aim. I got it just before I left Australia for the summer, so un unfortunate timing, but the plan is to try and come back next year with some tricks to go for this. Perfect, mate. And your mum and dad are here. Anything you want to say to them? Give them a shout out. Sorry, mum. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mate. Good luck for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, man, he's got nothing to apologize for. Big win for him yesterday in slalom and such an eventful final and to think that he's putting on such a good showing here in speed and style despite really not having any tricks can't wait to see what he's gonna have for us next season here's a look at where we sit so far after the first runs in our quarterfinal matchups for the men Meacham the number one qualifier with the advantage over Ferry Kaiser over Bass Van Steenberg and David Leibs got 0.7 over Dylan Crane and Fern Winkler is actually leading after those tricks were calculated over Jackson Fruit with 1.2 advantage. Well, you know, one event that you know and love very well, Alan, is the whip-off. Everybody loves the whip-off, the pilgrimage up to Crab Apple. Let's take a look at some of this year's highlights from the 2023 whip-off here in Whistler.
Does the whip off ever disappoint? It's always so wild. What was it like to actually be out there flying sideways for the fans? Oh man, it was awesome. I mean, there's never a bad time when you're going that fast, hitting jumps that big. And to have that crowd and all the other riders just getting you pumped to try to get even more sideways. I mean, it started out as the unofficial. It was taken over, I think it was Sven Martin that started it maybe up there one year. And now it was, I mean, it was too good not to add to the Crankworx roster. And now we have it at all the stops. Yeah, I mean, it's just the fun event. You know, snowboarding has the method. In mountain biking, we have the whip. And we've seen huge names kind of make their names at the whip off. 2014, Finn Isles, obviously a big name now in World Cup downhill racing, but he won at the age of 14 way up there. It's, you know, those moments that we won't forget for a long time. We're probably gonna have some of those moments tomorrow as well when we crack into Red Bull's Joyride. David Godziak has been on a tear. He, he's flown here from X Games where he was competing in dirt. Here's some footage from Red Bull Roof Ride out in Poland, an event that he and his brother Simon put on. This guy did a cash roll off of a flat drop, a front flip 360 off of a flat drop. Cash roll tail up there. Tomorrow's gonna be insane, Alan. Yeah, I mean, watching that, it's almost like watching a video game. I kind of feel like I'm playing Dave Mira BMX back in the early 2000s. It's like unbelievable to me how many tricks and what tricks they can get off in one jump. It, it's amazing. And we're going to get to see it all right here in the Boneyard tomorrow. And, and because we're in the Boneyard and because the crowd has so much energy, they go harder at this event than they do the previous three stops. It's just a fact. It happens. Last year, how loud the crowd was when Thomas Lemoyne gapped the whole final feature, we just took our headsets off and we just took in the moment because I've never heard humans make so much noise with their vocal cords and their hands. It was insane, kind of like today's speed and style final. So make sure you join us tomorrow for Joyride. But right now, let's take a look at how things are shaking down for the women's semifinals. It looks like we had a bye run for Gooms. And so Haz and Gooms feeling pretty good based off of their seeding runs. They are scoring on some positioning out there. Yeah, number one and number two there, but a little bit swapped from what we've seen in some of the, the standings. We've seen we've seen Robin Gooms take a few of these events, but our number two qualifier, we'll see if Haz can keep that first place back up to the top. So Haz is hanging out in that heat number one of the semifinals. Who is going to meet up with her? Natasha Miller has a 2.35 advantage over Kathy Kuypers. She kind of just needs to hold it together. Natasha getting that little whip off. I think that's going to score her some points. Kathy Kuypers, remember, has that deficit because of the case. See if she can get over this time. Oh, big oh. case, but keeps the momentum rolling forward, so she's still on track. Oh. Natasha, all she needs to do is just keep it clean, don't make any mistakes. Move on to the next round. You can see her kind of tiptoeing through there. Those turns are dangerous. So Natasha Miller will meet up with Harriet Burbage Smith in the round of four. We call that the semifinals. Kathy Kuypers, she's probably stoked she doesn't have to hit that second jump anymore tonight. So here we go. Natasha Miller is moving on into the next round. Miller. So Robin Gooms has secured herself a spot in heat number two of the semifinals. We're about to find out, will it be Jensen or Reno, who she'll be competing up against. Nice little knuckles in the gate for these two. It's, I love the easy math of speed and style. If you get a perfect 100 on a trick, you score a second off of your time. What other race format can you just find a second hanging out on course? So Sheelan Reno with the advantage of 2.2 ahead of Kaya Jensen. Yeah, not a small margin, but definitely a margin that can be made up, especially with the points and the time on the table off these two trick jumps. Nice tuck no hand out of Shaylin. Looks like Kaya got a little bit of a whip off. Oh, Kaya getting a little bit sketchy on that little drop. Hopefully she has the momentum to get over. She does, a little bit, maybe a one-hander there, so she's still in it. It's gonna take a lot to make it happen on the bottom here for Kia. Shaylin Reno just kind of dancing around, knows she's got it covered. Shaylin Reno, third place, the last stop in Austria. She's uh, still still in it out here. She's going to go up against Robin Gooms for another chance to make it into those metal rounds. Both of these riders riding hardtails. You see their tires just kind of skipping around those corners. 
I don't know how we would figure it out, but I'd be interested to know how much time their tires were on the ground versus their actual time from top to bottom, because they're just skipping around those turns. Yeah, I mean, the advantage of having full suspension on this course, where the bike just wants to levitate through those bumps, you're watching these riders on hardtails, the fact that they're able to keep it on the course is so impressive. Look at those smiles from both competitors having a blast out here in the Whistler Village. There we go. Now we have some racing for ourselves. We got a full two heats here in our semifinal set and ready to rip. Number one qualifier, Harriet Burbage Smith, will go up against number five qualifier, Natasha Miller. Then we got number two and three qualifiers, Reno and Gooms, which will be a pretty tight one, I imagine. You know, obviously we talk about the flat corners, the berms, the start is where everything, you can get yourself off on the right foot. There's a plenty of bad ways to do it. There's a few good ways. I was trying to learn from Thomas Lemoyne how to start. Check it out. Gate starts are absolutely crucial for head-to-head -head racing, especially for speed and style. Ready, that's the gate. You can gain or lose seconds on your opponent depending on how well you develop your gate start technique. Someone said gate start? Where did you come from? Cam's right. Gates are pretty crucial. Yo, am I doing this right? What you have to do is find a good position before you drop where you want to lean a little bit into the back to go forward as soon as you hear the beeps or okay. you see the lights. And when you go forward, you have to go near your bars, but make sure you don't go straight in front of you because your wheel is going to go too high and you will lose time when it's going to go down. So you want to go forward, but also downhill a little bit. So you're like pulling all your energy that way. Go that way. Yeah. Riders ready, watch the game. I think it needs a little more practice on it, but it's getting there. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate the tips there from Thomas Lemoyne. I feel like my gate starts still need a, a little bit of work, but you know, I couldn't ask for a better coach out there. Thomas Lemoyne has had such an insane season in speed and style, and you know what? He's gonna be competing in Red Bull Joyride tomorrow. He said that it's gonna be his final slope style competition. You're not gonna wanna miss that. We're gonna cheer on Thomas Lemoyne, the man who made the crowd go crazy just a year ago. And we got the rest of the big dogs out there, Eric Fedko, David Godzik, Lucas Hooper, Emil Johansson. I am not going anywhere. I can't wait for that. And a little update on our men's brackets here for the outdoor research speed and style. We're gonna see second runs. First heat, we're gonna see Garrett Meacham, who's leading Daniel Ferry by 0.8. Garrett Meacham, the number one qualifier here today. Meacham took a win in Cairns. He's definitely following in the footsteps of a guy like Thomas Lemoyne on his quest to being a speed and style legend. Yeah, we talk about these riders kind of being crankwork specialists. I think that's where Garrett's really found his, his, his groove. You know, he's doing gate start practices. He's doing sprints on the weeks that he's not competing. We know he's got the tricks. We've seen him in slope style. So this, this event is pretty much built perfect for him. Let's see if he can advance here and keep this advantage he has right now over Daniel Ferry. Getting that back flip bar spin to Can Can dial. Garrett Meacham coming into the second turn. See what Daniel Ferry has in his bag. Oh, and just a straight three out of Daniel. And we know he's got more in the bag, so Garrett looking really strong. Just need to stay smooth through these turns. Kind of see him casing those jumps going into those technical flat turns. That is a technique learned out of motocross. In Supercross, the tightness of the turns, you don't have time to break, so you might case a jump on purpose to help you slow down, and we're seeing Garrett do that right here. Yeah, Garrett, strong advance right there into the semifinals, getting a big knuckles there from his pops, hanging out in the finish line corral. This kid's on fire, there's no slowing him down. He could definitely be a candidate for the win out here today. Was that a backflip double bar from Daniel right there? Clean, he was going for it, man, but he just didn't get the variation on the second jump. Yeah, you see the different techniques there through the rollers. Daniel pulling up before the first one, and Garrett jumping him. Yeah, he just didn't get the right initiation of the rotation there in that 360, but Garrett just being so locked in. He spins on the right axis for his 360, gets the bar spin and the X up. 
And you can just hear, like walking into a casino, the point tally going ding, 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 ding. Every variation that's added to that spin. He's got it down to a science, this guy, Lil Rojo. Yeah, the technicality of having to pull these oh, tricks was. while racing. Yeah, that was the little case. That little case, case case. Yeah, he rides a lot of moto as well, so that little technique will come natural to him. Yeah, where that works for him is he's able to slow down without hitting the brakes. And if he's not hitting the brakes, he's not losing traction, and he's able to stay in on his line and hit the perfect apex in those turns. So really cool to see that coming out. So Peter Kaiser has the advantage. It's just over a second ahead of Bass Van Steenbergen. This heat could mean a lot for Bass Van Steenbergen. He wants to finish in that second in the king. Overall, there's $10,000 on the line between he and Jackson Fru. Yeah, I expect to see everything out of Baz Van Steenbergen right now. This is oh, his yes. crankwork season, and Peter Kaiser pulling that Indian Air Superman Seagrab backflip to perfection. And Baz straight back Ooh. on the pedals, building quite a gap here. Let's see how it all works out. Peter oh, did, did Peter oh, go down? Oh, Peter sliding out after stomping that 360 double bar to table. Baz. You know what? That's what can happen in speed and style. Some of these riders are fast and consistent enough to where they don't need big tricks. Oh, another crash for Kaiser. No way. He was just cruising down to finish the run. Yeah, there's definitely no gimme, especially when you're on that side of the track that Peter was on. Coming off that second jump, they're actually turning back into the slalom course, and it's a flat turn, and from that lane, that Peter was on, it's a much tighter turn. I didn't see exactly what happened up top, but I'm guessing he washed out a little bit up there. He's right next to the GLC patio. Somebody hand me, hand this man a beer. Peter Kaiser's day of racing is over. Bass Van Steenbergen advances into the round of four. He'll be going up against that Kaiser Garrett Meacham. As we take a look back, Mikey, run us through what happened So Baz doing what he needs to do to maintain his second place in that king overall. Ooh. Here it is. Here's that turn after the second jump. Let's see what happens to Peter. Yeah, there goes the front end. Totally flat turn. It's got these little, little ball bearing pebbles on it. It's so hard to maintain traction. That's not the first time we've seen that identical crash today. Bass Van Steenbergen, man. Such a racer, so consistent. Oh, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, you can't go right through that. That's why whenever you see riders who are about ready to miss a gate, they give a little bunny hop, hop over that thing. Peter like, why didn't I just bunny hop? It's so hard to tell from this angle, but that hill is actually quite a bit steeper. We were standing up on the top of that little last section of this track, and it, and it drops in pretty steep. Got to give it to Peter Kaiser, though. Those backflip secret mini nairs were sick. Let's send it down to Rob. How you doing, Pete? That was a pretty spectacular run, mate. How was it? Yeah, thanks. Hey, it's just super loose out here, and we've been tiring. It's a long day, and yeah, lost it off camera, so I tried to go full all in again after that crash, and then lost it again, so it's what it is. Good times you, anyways. Yeah, good times. You put it all out there, mate. It looks like it's pretty tricky. And Baz, how's your week been? How you doing, mate? Yeah, it's been an okay week. Um, would have liked to have done it a little bit better, but uh, yeah, still good times. Whistler is always awesome, so yeah. Feel bad for Peter. The track's so slippery, so anything can happen. And you're going through the next round, so second place still very much on the cards for you. You're in for a bit of a fight in this speed and style. I know, yeah, really putting it down to the last round. I would have liked to just chill today, but I guess not. <laughs> no chilling at Crankworks, mate. How's the conditions? It's loose. Is the wind about a little bit? Is it quite difficult? Yeah, the wind's kind of on and off, and then the second jump's quite blind. The sun's just straight in your eyes, so that's pretty gnarly, actually. All right, mate. Well, good luck with the rest of it. We'll see you out there. Man, that's something to think about, Alan. We noticed that happening in the pump track. There was one straight away the course. About the same time of night where riders were having issues holding their line, and that second jump facing that same exact direction at the same time of day. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing to have bright sun in your eyes, but when it's on the back side of the lip, you're basically riding into a wall. You can't see the transition. It's full shadow. You're kind of squinting your eyes, and it goes all on feel. And when you're trying to race and moderate your speed and not go too fast and not go too slow and have that correct speed for those tricks, it's, it just adds a whole nother level of technicality. Well, we got something under review. Obviously, Peter, 
missed the gate. So they must be wondering if Bass missed the gate. That would really throw us for a loop here. Usually when we're under review, we get a nice little cheeky peek via replay at what they're looking at. But talking about that sunshine, that could be why Daniel Ferry just had his timing off on that 360, missed the variation. So that really opens up the door for some of our more race-focused riders like Bass and Jackson. Let's see, let's take, take a real close look at Bass's tires. Let's see what he does here coming through. Looking good so far. Coming around, he's good there. Good. He's good there. I mean. Uh, yeah, that's going to count. It was impressive, actually. Uh, that was watching that replay, seeing how fast Peter Kaiser did get up. He was almost standing up, grabbing his bike to get back on before he stopped sliding. That was <laughs> crazy. No way. He made it through the finish line. <laughs> sliding. Pete Rose. You break the beam, you break the beam. You don't hey. have to be on the bike. I mean. We could whip out the rule book, but it sounds good to Even me. The uh, baseball slide on this gravel boneyard is not something I choose to do on an afternoon Friday. No, especially gloveless. So something that is kind of different right now compared to some speed and style events. Some speed and style events, it's kind of one speed cruising through, and everybody's riding pretty, pretty tight to each other. This one has more variables. So that right there plays to the favor of the racers. But the fact that the second jump is tough to trick really opens up the door for guys like Fruit, guys like Bass, who are in the middle of a, a battle a, a battle amidst this battle. There's $10,000 on the line. Second place wins $10,000. Third place wins $3,000, or sorry, $5,000. So I guess there's $5,000 on the line, but you wanna see that $10,000 check instead of that $5,000 check. And we have some scenarios prepared for what we can expect if we see Jackson and Bass both continue to do as well as they're doing right now. Yeah, and a lot of these riders, you know, they're, they're putting together their own race programs. You know, they're not part of a factory team traveling with a truck that's hauling everything for them. So $5,000 is a lot of comfort for next season. You know they're gonna be going for it. Yeah, you hear Bass in that interview, man. He was hoping to grab that crown for the third season in, the, in a row. He would be the first person to ever do that. But it's going to be second at best in the King overall for Bass Van Steenbergen on a bit of a salvage mission today. We got Jimmy talking something over with Bass. Mikey Hatter getting in the mix there. On our replays, it sure looked like he was fine. So maybe there's something further up the course they're taking a peek at. This is kind of crazy. I'm gonna to try to explain this the best that I can. So. Everybody checking their phones. So apparently, Peter Kaiser's tricks scored so high and he did cross the finish line it sounds like he has the advantage. Even though he missed a gate, I'm gonna wait until we get some more clarification on that to say for sure that Peter Kaiser's going into the next round, because it doesn't seem to make any sense to me. But that's what they're chatting about down there. And that's why you got that look on Baz's face going, wait, what, what? Yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking for Baz's head to be nodding up and down, but it's going side to side right yeah, yeah, now, yeah. so I'm still, still confused on where it's going to go. He's like, what do you mean, man? I didn't miss any gates, and I crossed the finish line way first. You know, it would make sense to me. I'm just trying to piece it together in my head. It would make sense to me if Peter didn't miss that gate, and he crossed the finish line, tripped the lights, and his scores on the jumps 
were high enough to where it pulled him back from the deficit. Which he definitely had that in mind. You could tell by how fast he got up. And he also said mm -hmm. he got up and sent it, knowing that he yeah. was still in the game because he had those tricks. But then, yeah, when he came down that last section and missed the gate and then slid Pete Rose through the finish line, I'm just not sure how that all pans out. Well, yesterday was wild. We had some scenarios that we'd never even thought were possible before. We had a gap of one thousandth of a second that ended up being a tiebreaker, and that took place after a crash, and it put Ryan Gilchrist, who had the crash, back into the next round. So expect the unexpected out here. All right. I feel like this is our key to understanding here. Rob Warner's hanging out with Jimmy. What's going on, Rob? Well, Jimmy is the key that can sort this out. It's a bit, there's a bit of drama down here in the finished corral. Can you explain what the situation is, Jimmy, for us all? Yeah, so this is a little different to Jules Island. We are, we've got tricks involved here, and we're encouraging the riders to do the best trick that they can. So there's a maximum differential of 2.25 seconds on each run. So if someone crashes, it's 2.25 seconds, but they can make up that time in the jumps. So in this case, what exactly does happen? Who advances? Clarify that for us. Uh, Peter Kaiser advances. All right, from the horse's mouth. Here it is, Peter Kaiser. Good luck for the next round. Hey, man, I'd never argue with a horse. I don't want to get kicked. Wow. But we don't have to fully understand it or get behind it, but Peter Kaiser is going to be moving on to the next round. He's going to work his way back up to the top of the course. I think he's more surprised than anybody. Yeah, Jimmy's explanation is making sense to me. The only thing, my question is the missed gay part. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering about too. They must have predetermined instead of just a DNF, missing a gate there, we have it. We'll add 2.25 seconds. So that's the difference between speed and style and slalom when it yeah. comes to missing a gate. Because Second slalom, run in slalom be a DQ. It's a DQ, yeah. Now it's just max differential. Hey. We learn something new every day. So, Burn Winkler going up against Jackson Fruit. Advantage belonging to Burn. Or, sorry. It's we got Dylan the wrong name. David Crane. Lee. Yeah. David Lee with the advantage. Getting that triple oh, truck triple. driver. That's four tricks in one jump. Racking up that time. Gets a nice bar spin flip off Dylan Crane with a suicide. Now he's going to have to lay down the power. He does have an advantage when it comes to bikes down here on this bottom section. He's going to have more traction, more suspension, but it looks like it's just not going to be enough. David Lieb is on point with tricks, and his speed is fast. Winner of speed, winner of tricks, and advancing. David Lee on to the semifinals. There we go. David Lee knocks out Dylan Crane. Dylan Crane's done racing for the day. Might as well smash back some poutine. Win in Rome. Can't breathe. Man, usually the fans are asking for free stuff, but they're handing out snacks. I need to get in this game. Now we got Jackson Frew right side of your screen. Burned Winkler on the left. Jackson's got 1.2 to make up. He's going to have to do it with pure speed. Bernd Winkler's got a deep bag of tricks. Yeah, I can't imagine the emotional roller coaster that Jackson Frew, who's chasing Baz after that last call. Let's see what he can do. He's got a bit of a steep hill to climb. But if anybody can do it, it's last night's slalom gold medalist. Look at Jackson getting that toboggan in. He's pedaling before he even gets to the ground. But Bernd Winkler is not laying up with that double truck driver. Jackson Frew is gone. He's on a whole nother level, and Burt gets a little bit sideways, so Jackson's going to get even more of a gap. This is coming back to the similar situation. Will Burt Wingler's tricks be enough to take up that 2.250 max? Oh, what's it going to be here? Those tricks scored very high. Look at how much he has deducted, despite the fact that Jackson Frew has the three fastest times of the day. Burt Winkler, by virtue of those tricks, will advance into the next round. Wow. Okay, we're going to have to do some math and figure out who gets second in King of Crankworks. So many crazy developments here with Peter Kaiser making it in to the round of four. Jackson would have had to make it into the gold medal matchup to grab second. I'm going to say Bass Van Steenbergen is going to be safe with that second place in the King overall, which is crazy because that would have been 
the worst way to lose it anyways from that heat against Peter Kaiser. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to wrap my head around it. And the reason why I think, okay, I'm all right with this, this makes sense is because obviously if you miss a gate, you should have massive deductions. They predetermined the max deduction is 2.25. How many times are you gonna miss a gate but then still cross the finish line? That was an anomaly of a circumstance for him to crash once, get back up, crash again, but slide through the finish line. It's gonna be Peter Kaiser going up against Garrett Meacham. Bass Van Steenbergen eliminated. Jackson Fruit eliminated. Bass Van Steenbergen will get that $10,000 for second place in the King of Crankworks overall. We still have a heated race here. It's gonna be all tricksters in the round of four for the men. For the women, we got Harriet Burbage Smith going up against Natasha, uh, Natasha Miller. Robin Gooms, she's been flipping even in buy runs, going up against Sheila Reno. The two and three qualifiers. Reno's gonna have to dig a little bit deeper into those tricks if she wants to knock out Gooms. Yeah, watching Gooms in that in that free run, she was flipping super comfortably. Usually we're seeing seeing Gooms out here on a trail bike, but she's out here on a hardtail, so that's gonna definitely help her tricks. She's definitely relying on that trick aspect of it. But here we go. Harriet Burbage Smith and Natasha Miller in the gate. Harriet letting the secret out a little bit, seeing her elbow all bandaged up. Last night in slalom, she took the win. She's been nursing that elbow all week. First time we get to see Harriet raise anybody today. Harriet with a solid snap out of the gate, and this is where we're gonna start seeing some tricks and see what she's got. Big backflip, perfectly executed there, front end in. Really honing in on it, having a cruise. Oh, and then there's a dead air, so that's gonna actually add some time, but I think Natasha had one as well. So Harriet looking clean so far in this first round of the semifinals. You hear those tires skipping across the ground. That is not what you wanna hear or feel coming around those flat turns into the chute. Harriet, clean through the line first. She picked up 100 points, AKA a second off her time from that backflip on jump number one. Those straight air is not gonna help on jump number two, but it's not going to matter. Harriet is going to have the advantage over Natasha Miller. Pretty even gate out of both riders. Harriet just a little bit on the inside. Remember, Harriet had a ton of practice on those sections that we rode last night in the slalom. Look at that backflip. Gets upside down. You see her head spot the landing and stop rotating. She brings the bike straight in, both tires on the ground. I mean, Natasha Miller and Sheila Reno definitely have the opportunities to be the bracket beaters here because Harriet Burbage Smith and Robin Gooms both flipping on a collision course with each other for that gold medal matchup. If they're able to hold it together, that'd be quite the final. We'll see what happens. Harriet going for a trick on the second jump. She got a foot off, so at least she's not gonna have any time added for that second jump. Yeah, it looked like maybe she was going for that knack-knack, but the wind has been kind of gusting. It's pretty chill right now, but we've had a couple of gusts come in and out. So there we go, the score is coming in. Harriet is going to be the leader. She's gonna have a big advantage, 3.2 seconds. Harriet's in the middle of a successful speed and style season. She won in Cairns. She was second in Innsbruck. She would love to get the win two nights in a row here in the middle of the Whistler Village. Yeah, she let us know with a little bit of an emotional look on her face in that post-race interview last night, how much it means to actually be getting medals here in Whistler. It's the belly of the beast right here. It's Thunderdome, it's everything. It's all in one, here we go. Robin Gooms and Shaylin Reno. Shaylin Reno with a bit of a gap. Gets that techno hander. Robin Gooms with a solid backflip. Wonder if either Robin or Harriet's got a flip on the second jump. So crazy coming into the sun. Oh, and Shaylin Reno looks like she got caught up in the wind right there. Able to hold on to it. Robin Gooms just shooting out in front. Pretty close to that gate there. Gooms across the line one. first, the scoring 100 points for that backflip. So many issues we're seeing on that second jump. <laughs> there we go, Gooms with the fastest time of the day now. Breaking that 31 second mark.
So Goom's a rider that generally we've seen rely on her trick capabilities, also coming out with some speed. She's on a hardtail, which we haven't seen that much. Usually she's out here on a short travel trail bike. That's gonna make her a lot more capable on these tricks. It's gonna make her faster, but also she's gonna be riding a lot finer line on that DJ bike. Yeah, it definitely makes the possibility of flipping that second jump more alive, knowing that she's on that jump bike Oh! Yeah, Shailen Reno getting that nothing off. Just not quite enough speed. Yes, though. That was awesome. I love to see that, you know, especially under these circumstances, she's going for it. A nothing scores really well, obviously, if you stomp it clean. She got 65 points for it, not too shabby. Robin Gooms is going to have the advantage going into their second run. All right, back over to the men. Number one qualifier, Garrett, Lil, Rojo, Meacham, going up against a surprise, Peter Kaiser. Did not expect to find himself in the gate against the number one qualifier after an eventful last matchup. But he's got that backflip Superman Sea Crab ending there on the first jump. He's got that quadruple combo, the 360 double bar spin to tabletop on the second jump. And he was the number four qualifier, so he has the potential to give Garrett a run for his money, as long as his body's feeling all right after that two crash run. Yeah, they'll love to see the fist bump out of the competitors as they're about to go into battle. But Garrett's lined up way riders left on that gate. The number one and number four qualifiers, so this should be a pretty tight heat. Let's see what they got on the jumps. Oh, he gets it again. Peter's feeling good. Slips paddles the Oh, no. Able to get his feet back on just in time. Garrett with a solid trick on the first one. Gets that trick off on the second. You see those scores come in. So Peter Kaiser a little bit ahead on tricks. Let's see if Garrett can outrun him. Right here coming down to the finish. Putting down the pedals hard. Look at how hard Garrett's pedaling down the hill. And Peter's just hanging on by a thread. Throwing the biggest tricks he can muster and trying to keep it clean through those gates. he got to give it to Peter Kaiser for really going for it after that crazy two crash run in the last matchup. Cam, how do you reset? I know you've had gates. a lot of co competition. Oh. Oh. oh, hold on tight, buddy. Oh. How did he make that Ooh. last gate? Yeehaw, Yeehaw. cowboy. Yeehaw. <laughs> Rodeo. Cam, I was mentioning, you know, I know you've done a lot of high profile competitions in your time and when, when the wind comes in or like kind of the challenges that Peter had from that last kind of weird run, how does that kind of mentally change the game for you? How do you reset? I'd say those are two different things. So the wind thing, the sun thing, if you want to have that positive outlook, you have to look at that as an opportunity and go, everybody's got to deal with this. They're going to have a mistake and I'm not going to. You know, it's, it's, it's a toss up and the person with the positive mindset is probably going to be the one who's going to have it the cookie crumble the way they want it to. But coming back after a crash like that, you, you got to hope that you've got short-term memory loss and you can kind of just block it out. Rob's hanging out with Peter. All right, Peter, where you are living on a prayer here tonight. How are you feeling after crashing twice in Run Run to start with? Surprisingly, my hands are all good still. It's not too bad. I was just surprised that I actually had to go up again. I didn't know what happened there. It's just, oh yeah, we'll be back up. And then, yeah, one more lap and see what's, what's up from here now. That was it, what's it like for you? How hard is it to mentally adjust? You were out, you were back in, you were back at the top about to do this run. I mean, is it difficult for you? I don't know, I was about to pad off, so there's definitely a cold, like not a cold start, but I was like, oh yeah, sweet, we'll just go and can't get worse, so we'll just enjoy from here and see where it goes. And what's the conditions like? There's a little bit of wind about, the, the track is pretty blown out now, the sun's low, how are you getting on? Is it a lot to deal with? Uh, I think for me it's pretty good till after the second jump, and then I'm struggling a little today with the loose stones and uh, loose dirt on there and the flat turns and stuff. But it's the same for everybody, so yeah, keeps it keeps it interesting, I guess. I love the positivity. Good luck, my brother, good luck. Yeah, Peter Kaiser, good stuff there. Excited to see him in that next run, see if he can get his feet on the pedals after that sea crab Indian air and make both those gates. It'd be wild to see him make it through this matchup, but anything's possible. We've learned anything from last night and tonight already. Is that anything's possible. Expect the unexpected. Right now, we got Bernd Winkler, the number two qualifier, going up against David Lieb, quality number three.
you can expect anything. It's going to be massive tricks out of both of these riders. Let's see what they got in the first jump. Oh, David Lieb not quite getting off what he wanted. It looked like maybe his front end was a little bit high, but he's hanging on. And Berg gets that truck off. Backflip Barsman out of David Lieb. For 98 or 122 points for that backflip double bar for Bird. That's a high scoring trick right there. Here comes Lee catching up a little bit. Oh, oh no! Hey! Hey, he, he crossed the line. Light. You break the beam, you break the beam. As long as his body's all right, that's gonna count. Insane final straightaway. Insane. Yeah, I think all you need to do is break the beam. You could be sliding on your head and it still counts. We almost saw that yesterday in the slalom. Upside down, sideways, backwards, doesn't matter. Just trip that beam. This time, considering where he crashed, it's going to be the same with or without the crash. Obviously, it doesn't feel the same. No, it looks like he's got a little bit of a meaty paw right there. Peter coming around, he gets a pedal. It looks like his foot might have got hung up on that gate and threw his weight forward. That could have been a lot worse. Here it is right here. Yeah, his yeah. foot got a little bit stuck on there and threw him forward. You don't see that coming. That's definitely one that'll catch you off guard. I do like that little dance he did getting up though. He's got style while he crashes. Any extra points for that? He's all good though. He made it around the right direction on that final gate. So, so it's gonna Bernd count. Winkler crossed the line first. He's the leader. Despite that crash, big tricks for him. You know, it really pays off to get that 122 point score and backflip double bar every run on that first jump. Wow, that was insane. Yeah, definitely. You can see the elbows and the hands. A lot of words for where Bernie Winkler is going to have to. Man, we were talking about Ryan Gilchrist last night, how much of a gladiator he was. And now we're seeing more of the same here, these riders taking crashes, advancing into the next round, making it back up to the top, doing it all over again. Like that final straightaway, if you don't know what it's like to crash on it, you can attack it. As soon as you know, you no longer have that blissful ignorance, and you're like, oh boy, maybe I should break coming into that final gate. So Haz, right side of your screen right now. She's got 3.2 advantage over Natasha Miller. Certainly for a clean not, run. Certainly not a free run out of, for Harriet here, but an opportunity for her to really zone in. And look forward, let's see what she's got. She's super comfortable on these backflips. And there's another one, perfect. Kissing at the top of that landing with the front tire. So important to land high up on those landings, especially in speed and style because the higher up on the landing that you, you land, the more speed you're going to generate coming down the backside. Harriet is looking for something on that second jump. She takes a foot off every time. She's looking for some kind of variation. She's going to need to figure it out because it looks like she's going to be advancing into the matchup means the most, the gold medal matchup. Yeah, she's definitely going to need to clean up that second jump for the gold medal rounds if she wants to walk away with another gold medal here in Crankworks Whistler. So Harriet's probably going to score something around 100 for that backflip up top. You're right. I agree with you. Lemoyne is speed and style. We look forward to the next time we're going to see him in a speed and style, but he's focusing in on what he's calling his last slope style event on the Crankworks World Tour. He was the man everybody was talking about last year at Joyride. He's competing again tomorrow, and we can't wait to have him back in speed and style. So Robin Gooms with the advantage of 1.7 over Sheila Reno. Gooms is flipping, has is flipping. If Gooms can make it out of this round, we're gonna have a pretty interesting gold medal matchup, but she needs a clean run. Yeah, Shailen Reno came out and surprised us with that nothing. Let's see what she's got. Tuck no hand her next up, so she's super clean so far. Can she get this nothing off clean here? Here she comes. Watch Shailen. Oh, and another tuck no hander to Toboggan. 
Both riders staying clean. Yeah, nothing would be such a wild trick in the wind, too. Sheelan playing it smart. The Goom's getting some sort of one-footed variation there. We're going to have some pretty similar runs here when we have Robin Gooms and Harry Burbage-Smith going up against each other in the gold medal matchup. Yeah, both those riders traveling the world together, super good friends, training on the airbags, elevating, pushing each other to the next level. And then they're going to find themselves in the gold medal matchup. So it's going to be, as you say, Harriet and Gooms in the gold medal matchup. It'll be Natasha Miller and Sheelan Reno who will duke it out for the bronze. Look at Robin getting a little bit corked out on that backflip. You gotta love the tuck no hander to X up combo from Sheelan as well. I certainly don't want to call anybody out, but we've seen, oh look at, yeah, there goes Robin going for that knack knack. But we've seen Robin Gooms and Harriet Burbage Smith with those perfect backflips. And in the past, we've questioned them what do they have beyond that? And there are some flip combos in the bags of both of those riders. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here in the gold medal matchup between the two. And the only way we'll ever see those variations at this point in the progression of this discipline is if they're going up against each other in the gold medal matchup, which is the scenario we have on our hands right now, the one and two qualifiers. The same two riders who were in the gold medal matchup at our last stop in Innsbruck, Austria. So a little sequel to that matchup. And then the bronze medal matchup will be fought between Sheila Reno and Natasha Miller. So the stage is set for our medal round for the women as we focus our attention back over to the men. Garrett Meacham, Peter Kaiser, David Lee, Bernd Winkler. Garrett Meacham, a guy who, you know, he can really ride slope style and he's Early on in his career, definitely on that quest, but now realizing with his background of moto and BMX and dirt jumping, he is a perfect candidate for being a speed and style legend. Kicking things off with his first podium in 2019 and then just climbing the ranks ever since. Meacham grabbed the win in Cannes. Big speed and style win to add to his resume giving him the confidence to do something like qualifying first here today. But he's going up against another trickster, one who's definitely like Rocky in the late rounds of a boxing match. Peter Kaiser has 1.1 to make up, and he's got some tricks he can use to do it as well if he can put it together. And Garrett coming out with a lot of power and a lot of force. Let's see what he's got on this first jump. Oh! Both riders sticking to their basics. Garrett is straight on the pedals. Yeah. It's that truck Whoa. to X up and law, Peter. That, that's one of those things that could have been the sun for Peter there. For sure. So yeah. Terry, looking in command here. You know, looking at that list of accolades in the speed style competition, you know what I saw that was missing? It was a medal from Whistler. And we saw last night how important it is for these riders to get a medal here in Whistler. And Garrett Meacham is on his way to doing just that. Well, he's definitely gonna get a medal. It's just a matter of what color it is as Garrett Meacham secures himself a spot in the gold medal matchup. That's not the last we've seen of Peter Kaiser and his backflip sea crab Indian air. I love that angle. I could watch that all day. That is my favorite trick we've seen in today's competition. Peter Kaiser sticking that one straight magnetized to the pedals in this run. But here we go. We're gonna get a good look. Peter Kaiser's timing off the slip. You know he wants to chuck the bars twice and crack into a table. But you can see he was a little bit late. It looked like he wasn't ready to leave the lip quite so soon. He couldn't see where he was. Yeah, that's directly related to that sun in his eyes. It's like riding off of a black wall. You don't even see the transition. So you're all based on feel. And that's what caused that front end to come up a little high. You see him shaking his head. He knew he kind of let one go. But it must be like the day that won't end for him. <laughs> Seriously. He was like, all right, well, it didn't go my way. I'm going to go grab a beer. And then all of a sudden, get back up and do so much more racing. And he's even cleaner with that backflip sea crab Indian air. That was the biggest extension we've seen all day. And right to the pedals. Love that trick. Yeah, we've been talking about the challenging elements. And it does kind of feel like the wind is starting to die down as the sun goes down. So that should affect the riders a little bit less and we should start seeing some mega extensions on these tricks. I'll take it.
fans swarming our riders here as they exit the finish. You hear Mikey Hatter, our, our live announcer down there, talking about the sea of mountain bike fans. That is a good way to describe Crankworx Whistler. Yes, definitely. Probably the most concentrated location of hardcore mountain bike enthusiasts in the entire world, right here in the Whistler Valley. So, Alan, just about a month ago, we had a gold medal matchup for the women in speed and style, and it was a great show. It was Harriet Burbage Smith and Robin Gooms. Robin Gooms had that backflip one footed can can on the first jump. These are these variations you're talking about that we don't see unless these riders are going up against another competitor who also has the backflip. Lucky for us, we got the same two riders in our gold medal matchup here today. Gooms showing she has that backflip one-footed can-can and that backflip knack-knack. Will we see either of those tonight? Only time will tell. Right now, it's all about Burned Winkler lined up in the gate against David Lieb. Tight matchup between these two. Burned has the advantage of just about a quarter of a second. Yeah, 0.23 separating these riders. We know they're going to be sending it to try to get into the next round. Who's it going to be? Burn gets that. Oh, and David oh, Lieb. Lieb down. Over rotating. Looked like maybe he was going for that triple truck driver again. Front end came up. That indicates a little bit of a late pop off of the lift. Hopefully he's okay. He's kind of been nursing a bit of a knee injury this whole season, so hopefully he's healthy. Cruz down to the bottom, we'll see him in that bronze medal matchup. What do you know? Burned Winkler, silver medal just a year ago. Second place qualifier here. He's gonna finish at least in the silver medal position here again today. He's grabbed himself a spot in the gold medal matchup against Garrett Meacham. Yeah, we see David Lieb up, hoping he's feeling all right because he's still got more racing to go today. He's got a bronze medal to fight for. David Lee will be going up against Peter Kaiser. Kind of nice to have that bridge between when you don't have enough speed. I'll tell you what, the Joyride course doesn't have any bridges between. No, absolutely no bridges. We got some crazy features on that course this year. Who's excited for Red Bull Joyride? Right, let's hear it. I want to see some comments in the Red Bull Bike comment box here on YouTube. Red Bull Bike YouTube channel hit 2 million subscribers today. That's cause for celebration if you haven't yet subscribed. What are you thinking? Get on it. So here we are looking. And it looks like, yes, he was going for that triple, but the front end was a bit too Ooh. high. And when he held on to that third bar spin, it caused him to over-rotate into a 450. You see him grabbing that leg real quick. Oh, it looks like a hip. Someone might be stuck to the sheets when they wake up tomorrow morning. Oh, I feel bad for all the sheets in Whistler Hotels. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not helping much myself, to be honest. <laughs> I've contributed a lot of, a lot of blood to those sheets. I'm sorry for your laundry machines. David Lee looks to be pretty padded up, though. He might be all right. We'll see him in the bronze medal matchup against Peter Kaiser. Burned Winkler, man. He is, he's had some issues on this boneyard when he was a youngster about ready to compete in slope style, but now he's made up for that. Two years making it into the final in speed and style. Going to be more stoked for him. And then Garrett Meacham, a kid that I watched grow up at the local dirt jumps in Aptos, California, has done quite a job of making a name for himself. He's got an opportunity to get two gold medals in speed and style this season. That'll be fun to watch, but right now, we got Natasha Miller and Sheelan Reno loaded back up in the gate. We got our bronze medal matchup, run number one. Now, Sheelan Reno, with the bronze medal at the last stop. She'd love to make it two in a row. Natasha Miller made it to the bronze medal matchup last year here. I'd love to see Natasha looking up at that light. We have Canada and USA, so the battle for the North American winners right here is gonna be fought hard. There we get that techno hander to X up. Natasha with that whip. So Shaylin powering out of that turn. Now, tuck no hander to toboggan, so mixing up that combo on the second jump. 
Listen to those tires as they come around this turn here. Good call. You can hear them just skittering and chattering, and it's almost impossible to keep the bike online when that happens. Hardtails with high PSI going over a cheese grater. So Sheelan crossing the line first, scoring some nice deductions for those points. Point. Going to have the advantage. 3.6 going into their second run here in this bronze medal matchup. Yeah, quite the gap there for Shailen Reno heading into the second round. But as we've seen, anything can happen. We've seen some crazy stuff out here in the boneyard over the last couple of days. And to think that we're not even close to being done with Crankworks Whistler 2023. And we've already had so much action. Starting things off with the 1199 downhill race, the Canadian Open DH on the brand new course, a world-class course. Yeah, man, that, that 1199 course is something else. I, I was lucky enough to get some laps on that track and it is full on hardcore. You know, it's this, this event's been happening so long, I, I just started thinking, what am I gonna do after Crankworks? I know, I can't believe it. This is gonna be our last stop of the season. We've condensed all four stops between March and July. We've crowned a queen. Caroline Buchanan doing it for her second season in a row. She came in as the reigning queen and of course made that her goal to hold on to that crown. And we got a new king, the man, Tohoto Ariki Penny, burst onto the scene down in his hometown of Rotorua, New Zealand. The name Ariki in the Maori language, a name that means chief, means leader, means king. So fitting to see him pull out all the stops in this 2023 season. He will be the reigning king coming into next year. So, so Alan, sometimes my favorite highlights from an event may be comedic lowlights. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop this one on you. Alan Cook racing the 1199 downhill. We saw him lose his helmet visor and cans last year. <laughs> this one was a little bit mellower. Don't you hate it when the camera happens to be right there, Alan? I do hate it, but what they, here's, look at how many times it takes me to pick up my bike. <laughs> I couldn't feel from my elbows down. Look at my hand. Oh yeah. I, can, I have no whoa, control whoa. over my arms. No way, you got a dead arm. Absolutely, from, the <laughs> from elbows down on both sides, I couldn't feel anything for half the track. How hard, how technical was that track and how awesome was it to be a part of that race? Oh man, it was amazing. I mean, the first year to race that track, there was no way I was gonna miss it. Coming back from an arm injury, I actually didn't race in Innsbruck just to make sure I was gonna get those laps. Was that the arm that was having a hard time grabbing the handlebar? It was both arms. I didn't have <laughs> arms. It was basically like trying to pick up my bike with my hands in my pocket. <laughs> Well, it's awesome to have you out there in the mix. You talked to me about another crash at a different part of the course, so I thought that was going to be the one that we were going to see. That's the kind of track that's, if you can stay on your bike, you're stoked, and you watch the winning run from Jacob Jewett, so loose. The guy who won the event, and he was on the edge of control the whole time. Yeah, I mean, that's the only way to ride that track. If you're going to be anywhere up in the top, top times, on the edge from top to bottom, no doubt. I can't wait to see that race again next year. I mean, this year's probably the best this course is ever going to be. Was it Was it still pretty fresh here in this inaugural running? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty dry all, all week on the downhill course, but it held together super well. I mean, the holes got deeper, the ruts got oh. bigger, the rocks exposed themselves. Look at Jacob just like he's on a rhythm section. That was where the crash was for me in seating. <laughs> I did a bit of a tomahawk down that one. Oh, that was seating, okay. <laughs> Look at how fast Jacob just commanding all the way into the finish doing it for Canada, doing it for Stevie Smith. And look at the emotion between him and his brother there at the finish. We talked about it yesterday, but we should talk about it today. How about the younger brother, Dane Jewett? Yeah, Dane Jewett, the winner of the junior category, actually had a faster time than his brother winning the elite, which is super rare. We have only seen that a couple of times in the history. I can think of Nico Vuyo, I can think of Jackson Goldstone recently, but other than that, it's kind of a new thing. The Canadian Open downhill is just a bona fide legendary downhill race. It started traditions like Heckler's Rock, and now we got a whole new course in honor of Stevie Smith. I can't wait to see it again next year. Rob Warner, I know you love that race. 
I did, I did. I loved it so much. I mean, to get to call a World Cup cast, a World Cup class track like that, maybe more actually. It was so extreme, top to bottom. As you said, a real tribute to Stevie Smith. He'd have loved it. We were hoping it was going to rain just to make it a bit more difficult for him. And of course, to see Jacob Dewitt win from just down the road in Squamish, like you said, his brother was even faster. Keep an eye on those two. We had Valentina Hull, the reigning world champion, win the women's, yeah. It was a day out. It was one of the best downers I've seen. So incredible and looking forward to it for next year. That's for sure. For sure, Rob. I mean, this run from Valley Hall right here, I believe it was 19 seconds ahead of second place. Yeah, an absolute dominant win out of Valley out here, showing she absolutely is on form going into world champs. So it should be an exciting rest of the season from her. So, Rob, you said you were kind of holding out hope for maybe a little bit of rain to come just a little bit early. How great would it be if in the future, one of these years, we get to see a mud race on that track? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it would be a spectacle. I'm not sure anyone's really ready for it yet. I mean, the track is extreme. It's, it's amazing. It's got all these nods to Canadian free riding. They're big rock slabs. They might be a bit tricky in the wet, but the 1199 track is here. It's going to stay. It's incredible, and yeah, let's go racing next year on it. It's going to be something to see. Let's do it. I can't wait already. I wish we didn't have to wait 12 months. But we got way more racing ahead for today right now, the Outdoor Research Speed and Style Finals. We got things, we got unexpected things happening today. We just saw some craziness. Peter Kaiser sliding face first through the finish line and advancing into the next round. We learned a couple things about Speed and Style today. Yeah, we absolutely did. And we got to see me do a belly flop. One of these days I'll get a clip on this thing yeah. actually not crashing. Well, we've had plenty of clips of you winning whip offs, so you got that. But yeah, one of these days you're gonna make it into the broadcast too. You know, one day, you that's my get, goal. You gotta get that seating run locked in, make it into the downhill broadcast. Hear Rob Warner screaming your name. We got dogs. We did a full on dog feature in Austria. Why don't we do it again? We got this, that's a nice dog. We got Lemoyne fans out there. Hey, join us in the chat. Red Bull Bike YouTube channel just clicked over to 2 million subscribers today. Let's see what we got in here. We got people talking about, you know, the trick scoring so high that they can advance into next runs. We got controversy out there, I love it. Speed and style is its own animal. Red Bull Joyride, slope style is its own animal. And Neil Johansson is the man to beat. 12 wins in his career. There's only one event that he didn't win since he started winning. Took his first win right here, Red Bull Joyride. Continued to just win every event. He took a crash in Cairns last year, picked up right where he left off in Rotorua to finish the season, grabbed the win. And he's been unstoppable the first three stops in this 2023 season so far. But David Godziak gave him a run for his money in Austria. That was the closest we've ever seen to somebody beating Emil Johansson. Actually put the pressure on Emil to take a second run and better himself. You know, my favorite part about that is you could see the emotion on Emil's face. He welcomed that challenge. He wanted to be pushed, didn't he? Yeah, it was a big question, you know. 12 wins at Crankwork Slope Style. That was the first time he had to do that second run. And that was the big question with Emil Johansson was, does he have what it takes? And what we got to see is he feeds off of that competition and his bag is much, much deeper than he has allowed us to see over the years. Ooh, Jason Strain in the YouTube chat area said, doggos, we gave you the dogs. We're gonna look for some more dogs. But right now we're looking for some more racing. Peter Kaiser in the gate. The guy who's been through so much today, the gladiator going up against another gladiator. We just saw David Lieb have a crash. So these guys are feeling it, but they're still pushing it. They're on course. Yeah, the number three and number four qualifiers. So this is gonna be a super close race to get that bronze medal. It looks like Lieb gets that triple truck off. Peter Kaiser getting that Indian Air Superman seat grab good. And there's a double backflip bar spin. Lieb slips a pedal right there. He's getting back on the pedals. Kaiser with that double truck there. Let's see what they do. Kaiser sliding around that little unweighted turn. You see him doing that little pace scrub. Yeah, he's got it. Foot out, flat out from David Lieb. I'm just stoked to see both those riders land their tricks, make it down the course without going down. They've already hit the ground today. It's been an absolute massive day for these riders out here. 
I can't believe these guys can be so consistent with these tricks there. The double truck 360 with two bar spins for David Leap. And then the side angle is my favorite for this backflip Superman Seacrab Indian Air from Peter Kaiser in the wind on a jump that we've heard. You got to jack brakes before you take off the ramp. So it's so tough to modulate your speed and decide how much you want. Both riders getting their tricks here on the second jump, Alan. Watch Peter Kaiser, bar, bar. It looks like he goes for a bit of a table yep. there, so it'll be interesting to see if that works in on the judges' scoring. Yeah, he's been doing that in all of these rounds where he gets the right timing off of that lip. It looks like the sun is lowering. It might be considerably easier to time your, your exit off that ramp now. So David crossed the line first. His tricks scored him enough in time deductions to where he's the leader Going into this next round, just under a second will be the deficit between he and Peter Kaiser. All right. Hey, guess what we got going on here? We got our first gold medal matchup run of the day. Harriet Burbage Smith and Robin Gooms, the same two riders who were in the gold medal matchup just a month ago in Innsbruck, Austria. The two riders in the field who are backflipping. Will they be pushed to do backflip variations right now going up against each other? This is gonna be a good one. Yeah, both of these riders are definitely pushing the women's free ride movement to the limit. We're gonna to get to see it all here on this track. Has with a huge skate start. Let's see what they got. Nice flip out of Has. Oh, and there Goons goes for the can, -can and unfortunately just flies out. So we've seen this before. Has needs to keep it going. It's not over yet. He's going to get that maximum differential. You seem to see Robin Gooms picked up on that from the earlier rounds. He still puts down a trick on that second jump. Oh, there's no way she's going to have speed for that second jump. Robin Gooms, knowing she needed the variation going up against Has. Going for the backflip, one footed cane, 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 all corked out sideways, landing, sliding out. I just love seeing her go for it, you know? She knew she needed that. Harriet is going super fast today. She's the number one qualifier. She's on the bike with two brakes, front and rear suspension. Robin knew she needed the big tricks. So here's the replay. Watch Robin. So when you bring your foot up for that can-can, you actually make your body mass more central. So that's going to speed up your rotation. And I think that was the first time we saw her do it right there. Her foot got a little bit hung up on that top tube. So while her foot is up high, her body mass is central and her speed of the rotation is gonna increase. And I think that's why she was over rotated right there. Watch, she gets that foot across and it gets a little hung up and then it comes around and that front end just kind of bounces and she loses traction and washes out. Well, a matchup like this is what Speed and Style is all about. Rob's hanging out with Harriet and Robin. Okay, yeah, I am indeed. These two ride together, they train together. Robin, you went down pretty hard, and now when you rip your pants, how are you feeling? Actually, really good. There's nothing better than crashing and actually being okay, so I'm stoked I tried. And it was good. You, I mean, you got another run to go. A bit of a disadvantage to try and pull back now against Taz here. What you got up your sleeve? Oh, to be honest, I think this one's for the crowd. <laughs> How you doing, Haz? All right, a win last night. It's starting to look good tonight as well. Yeah, you know, it always feels good when you win against a mate. Ah! What do you expect to see from Robin in round two? Can she bounce back? Oh, yeah, bro, absolutely. It's like speed and style means nothing until you've done both sides, so keen for another matchup. All right, we're going to let these two get back up to the top. Let's hear it from Cragworks. Yeah, Robin's like, hey, I think this one's just for the crowd. She's trying to disarm Haz. She's going to go for it in the second run. Right. Yeah, I, we'll think the, I think the uh before that answer might be telling us a little bit more than the words. Well, if it is just a show run, the crowd will take it. A little warm up for Joyride tomorrow. There we go, the gold medal matchup for the men. Garrett Meacham, the number one qualifier, left side of your screen, burned Winkler with the fancy pants, a little bit of a rip in him after a long day. The number two qualifier, Two strongest riders of the day going head to head, gold medal on the line. Garrett Meacham, solid start. Riders are side by side here coming into these first jumps. So strong. Both riders landing perfect, getting straight back on the pedals. Let's see what they got on this second jump. Oh. And Garrett looks like he squeaked out a can can right at the end, so he's stacking points. And Burke pulling a little bit of a lead here, so Garrett's going to have to get on the horses. 
You see him do that little case break, oh. keeping it super clean. Oh, man. Hey, I got to give it to Garrett right there. That's the more challenging side through that final straightaway. I feel like he lost a little bit of speed on the second jump. He came up a touch short, and he really made up for it by charging that final straightaway. So Garrett. Wow. After the points have come in for the jumps, and they've been added up with the times, Garrett Meacham is going to be the leader by just two thousandths of a second. These guys are so consistent with these two tricks. They've been doing them all day. On jump number two right here, watch Garrett, the 360 bar spin. He sneaks the X up and the one-footed cannon, comes up a little bit short, but gets on the ponies for the last section of the race. Yeah, watch as he reaches for this can-can. His front end comes up a little bit high. He cases maybe just an inch or two. So Burned only getting one bar spin in that 360 on the second jump. Garrett really made up for it, not only on getting huge combos on both tricks, but just not surrendering after a slight mistake and powering through those final gates. He's got so much speed in that final section. Yeah, 0 .002 between them, so almost nothing in it coming into that final matchup. But here we are, the bronze medal matchup. We're going to give out some hardware here sooner or later. Here we go. Run number two between Sheelan Reno and Natasha Miller. Reno with a hefty advantage of 3.6. Reno gets the jump. Coming into this first trick set. What is it going to be? Get that tuck no hander to X up off again. Super consistent and clean on that trick combo. You've seen her mix it up here. There's the tuck no hander. Oh, oh. Just kind of cases a little bit there. Natasha barely making over that second oh. jump. But look, foot off for Reno. So Reno almost missing a gate there and able to fight to stay on. Natasha Miller pulling up right next to her, listening to those tires oh, skittering yeah. down. What's it going to be? What? Point zero two six, super close on time. Oh, Sheelan's going to love those 85 points on jump number one, 70 points on jump number two. Natasha Miller not getting tricks, so she's going to actually have time added on. So one thing's for sure, Sheelan Reno is going to grab the bronze medal here in speed and style. There's that, there's that moment all these athletes dream about is being in the finish line corral here in the middle of the Whistler Village with a big crowd on hand, all cheering for you. You know what, she almost threw it away. Now we know she would have, oh! Oh, just <laughs> willing the bike around. That was some, the, oh. the force is strong with Shaylin Reno. I'm hearing in my ear from time and it's scoring. She's clean. She did in fact make it around that gate clean. And now we know what would have happened, you know, in second run if you miss a gate, it's just the max differential added on. I love the fact that we learned something about speed and style today. As Sheila Reno, she absolutely is making a run at this speed and style thing, grabbing a bronze medal at the last two stops here at this 2023 Crankworks World Tour. Congratulations to Sheila Reno. Yeah, a hard fought bronze medal out here today. This technical course, it's been hot, it's been dusty, it's been windy, there's been sun. Must feel good coming down the end there. Well, let's listen up. Rob is hanging out with Reno. All right, Sheila, congratulations. Third place finish for you. You've got to be happy with that. Good way to finish your week. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. In Innsbruck and pump track practice, I broke my hand, so I'm so glad to be back on my bike and just sending it. Back and successful. What's it like at this tonight, this course? I mean, it's loose. It looks like it's pretty difficult. Wind conditions coming in as well. Has it been tricky? Um, yeah, it's insanity. We're going into the second jump with uh, some sun in our eyes, so we're just hoping for the best. But, you know, we're out here getting it. <laughs> exactly. Well, congratulations. The final's coming up. Do you think Robin can pull it back against Taz? Oh, uh, they're both so good. It's going to be a competition for, for sure. <laughs> this is going to be good. We're going to get you, let you go and have a party now with this awesome Crackworks crowd. Yeah! Hey! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, man, that's crazy coming back from that injury. What's the story on that? Yeah, that wasn't that long ago. Come back from any broken bone that fast, you got to want it. And it's so awesome to see her come out here, round out this crankwork season with a bronze medal. Two bronze medals. So impressive. Well, who's going to grab the bronze for the men? Will it be David Lieb 
or Peter Kaiser, both of these guys. Long day, you see dirt on both of them. It's a really tight matchup. David Lieb with the advantage just under a second. Yeah, this is gonna be a tight one. You know Peter Kaiser's gonna be giving it everything he's got. He's had quite the day. Oh, oh maybe he didn't quite get that Indian off. It'll be interesting to see how the judges react to that score. I feel like both of them were a little hesitant in their tricks there. Oh, he gets the 360 double bars from the table there. Peter Kaiser, David Lieb issues on the second jump as well. Yeah, both riders just turning on the afterburners here, trying to hold on. Look at Peter, got that foot out and coming around. Looks like he has a slight advantage of 0 .010. So Leap through the line first. We're gonna add up these trick scores. David Leap grabs the bronze medal, and wow, what a tight battle. After the tricks were calved in, he does it by just 0.6 of a second. Aptos, California, making them themselves known. Oh, you're right. Peter Kaiser not getting full extension on that backflip. Sea grab, Indian air. Yeah, it looked like his foot just didn't quite get around the back. He was a little bit tight in that flip and didn't have the speed. Love seeing those different options through that rhythm section. Coming around to the second Let's jump. See here. Let's see what Dave got on the second one. I got the back flip bar. You know what? It looked like he was playing it safe right there. And it was a tight battle. Once everything was said and done, Peter stomping that double truck to the table. Rob standing by with David Lieb. Yes, I am, David. Amazing, big trumps, big tricks, lots of speed tonight. I know you've been working hard on speed style. It's really showing. Yeah, I've been working for this event. I, I love it. It's so much fun combining like my racing background with what I've learned in slope style. It just couldn't be any more fun. Well, that's right. I know you can. You are capable of competing in slope style as well. The perfect dude for this. Happy with your bronze medal here at Crankworx Whistler? Was, <laughs> are you happy with your bronze medal tonight? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it was a hard fought battle. I went down against Burned and uh, yeah, to pick myself up from that and put it on the podium is the best feeling ever. Amazing to see, mate. Enjoy ride tomorrow. Who's your money on? I guess I know. Ooh. Oh, I'm rooting for Fedco. Huh? Rune for Fedco. Oh, we're going for an outsider. All right, mate. We'll let you enjoy the party. Thanks, David. Thank you. What a way to finish up the speed and style season there for David Lieb. A silver in Innsbruck, a bronze here in Whistler. He looks to be over the moon with the performance here today. Hard to be bummed with this crowd cheering you on. Yeah, awesome to hear Fedco's name in the mix, talking about who might win. Unfortunately, missing a couple of events with an injury after Crankworks Rotorua, but he's back, he's healthy, he's ready to go. I mean, it's gonna be great having him back on course. He brings something special to the game. He's bringing those really stylish tricks, and I'm so fired up that he's healthy and gonna be back in the mix tomorrow. So, earlier in the show, we heard that sound bite from Emil Johansson talking about how watching Footage of Anthony Missouri, 15 years old at the time in 2011. Being in Joyride was an inspiration for a young 12-year-old Emil Johansson to pursue his dream. Let's look back at Anthony's run in 2011 that skyrocketed him onto the scene. He became known as the master of pop when he skied this quarter pipe right here. Boom! So much amplitude. If you can boost that high, you don't need to do a trick. But finishing your run with a backflip tail out of a step down is a good way to put an exclamation point at the end of the run. Hey, I know that guy. <laughs> it's good to be there celebrating with Anthony Missouri. And it's amazing to still see him on the scene out here. He just barely missed being in our Speed and Style show out here today. He had a crash in the round of 16, but he will be cheering on our current superstars of Slope Style in tomorrow's Red Bull Joyride. We will cap off the 2000 23 Slope Style World Championship Series. Let's look back at run number one in our gold medal matchup for the women. We saw issues for Robin Gooms going for the combo, the backflip, one-footed can going down. I feel like she's gonna go for it one way or another, whether it turns into a run for the crowd or if it turns into a come from behind victory. 
over Harriet Burbage Smith, who was today's number one qualifier. This is what's up right here. Absolutely. One thing I, I can almost guarantee is Robin Gooms is not going to lay up and hold anything back here. Has with 4.7 advantage over Gooms. Gooms ready to send it. Solomon Gate out of Harriet. And here we go. Let's see if Robin Gooms can get this flip can can off. And she does. Oh, yeah. Okay, so both riders super clean over that first jump. Now, what's going to happen here? Reach into that bag, tuck no hander, and Gooms she with puts another a second flip. Jump. With another yes. flip out of Gooms. So she's got points. She's chasing down Harriet as they come down to this final straight. Is it going to be enough trick? Out of Robin Gooms, or is Harriet going to be just too fast for the day? Oh, man. Enough. So good to see Robin Gooms flipping that second jump. We were wondering if we'd see that in the women's field. That's the first time we've seen it out here today. So Gooms doing all she can to try to make up that 4.7 deficit. Gooms with the second fastest time of the day while flipping both jumps, a variation flip on the first jump. So there it is, the official word is in. Harriet Burbage Smith grabs the gold. Two golds in a row, two back-to-back -back nights out here in Whistler, British Columbia. Robin Coombs with the silver medal. Oh man, we saw Harriet last night just soaking up a win. And to think that just 24 hours later, She's doing it all over again. Look, Harriet got a foot off on that flip on the first jump. Oh, did she? Nice. She so did. she's going for that combo, too. That's what she was talking about when we were kind of pressuring her. When are the flip combos going to come out? What have you been practicing doing into that airbag and unleashing it here today? Rob is standing by with Harriet, our gold medal winner, two nights in a row. Hey, how's I going to grab you here? Congratulations, a win last night. Another one tonight night in speed and style. You love the boneyard, don't you? Oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> what do you reckon, Robin? She did good? Yeah, she did pretty good. I'm proud of her, eh? But you put the pressure on her. Was it hard? Did you know that was coming on that second run? Back flipping the second round? Uh, yes, always. I know she's going to push it as hard as she possibly can. Um, and that's what I love about her. And then your second gold medal here in Whistler has. You've got to be feeling pretty good about that, right? Yeah, it's good. Um, I just had so much fun, and uh, I love being in Whistler riding, and yeah. Well done, well done. You're going to be up in time and watch Joyride tomorrow? Last question from me. Yeah, just going to be getting wobbly and cutting some dance shapes tonight. And... <laughs> I know you will. Well done. Congratulations, you two. <laughs> it's going to be a good night of celebration there. Congratulations, silver medal for Robin Gooms and Harriet Burbage Smith grabbing the gold for the second night in a row. What a show. <laughs> so, we still have more hardware to give out right now. We got the gold medal matchup for the men here in the outdoor research speed and style. Burnt Winkler against your number one qualifier, Garrett Meacham. Here we go, just two thousandths of a second to play for here. Garrett Meacham has a slight advantage. This is gonna be a drag race. Almost nothing between them. Let's see if Garrett can maintain his perfection. First place qualifier out here today. Gets that bar spin, backflip to can, -Can perfect. Straight on the pedals. What are we gonna see? Oh, Meacham is so fast right now. Getting his trick off. Okay, Burnt didn't quite get his trick off. Fully backing it into that turn. Garrett's gonna pull out a little bit on speed. Is it gonna be enough? Remember, these riders have almost no time between them. Oh, and man. look at Garrett's last straight. I feel like Garrett has it. Burnt may have even missed a gate there at the final straightaway. Oh, man, what a performance from Lil Rojo, Garrett Meacham, the man to beat all day, the number one qualifier. And just unstoppable through the jumps, clicking his combos every matchup. Let's see if Burned happened to miss that gate here. We're watching the black course. Oh yeah, that's that's the wrong side. Yep, that's 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 <laughs> not just missing a gate by a little bit. That's making the gate just on the wrong side. Yeah, if anybody had any question how much Lil Rojo wanted this one, that sprint down into the finish would tell you. It's been a long, hard day out here, and he gave it everything he had. There it is, the official word, Garrett Meacham grabs the gold medal.
making it two gold medals in one season there for Garrett Meacham. Rob, let's hear from him. Okay, Craig, well, let's hear it for little Rojo, taking the win. Well done, mate. You've got everything you need for that. You've got speed, you've got style, you've got the tricks. How was it for you tonight? Dude, it was mental, mentally draining. Like, every lap had to be perfect or else you were out. <laughs> like, the bottom turns were, like, the biggest deciding factor. And if we saw, like, half of everybody miss a gate. So, <laughs> that was, it was gnarly. It was an awesome to see. Your second gold medal this year as well. You took one in Cairns. I mean, you've got to be happy with the way speed and style is going for you. Oh, yeah, I'm loving it, baby. I'm loving it. What's your plans for tonight? Are you going to let off or what? Hell no, full gas, baby. Let's go. All right, let's go, Whistler. <laughs> yeah, Rojo. Full gas, baby. It's going to be a great night in Whistler Village. We got so much to celebrate out here. We got a big free ride entertainment movie premiere, and we got Joyride to look forward to tomorrow. Wow, we got some heavy energy out here. Congratulations to Garrett Meacham grabbing the gold medal for the men. What a race, Alan. This has been a nutty 48 hours. Yesterday's slalom threw us for the loop. Today's speed and style, we learned so much. We saw riders push themselves through crashes, getting back up to the top of the course, similar to what we saw yesterday in slalom. But in this event, you got to dig deep and pull a more difficult trick. Every bracket you find yourself in, you got to give it to the winners out there, Haz and Garrett. Yeah, they both had super clean days. I think Garrett had a perfect day, that first place qualifier, winning all of his rounds, making it through. Just the effort that he had all the way down through the end, he didn't let off the gas for one second. And like he said, he's going to keep the pedal to the pedal tonight. <laughs> Full gas. Like I say, it's going to be a great night in Whistler Village. If you're in your hotel room, watching us on your TV. Come check out the Nothings for Free premiere at the Olympic Plaza. If you're watching from home, why not join us for Red Bull Joyride tomorrow? It's going to be a doozy. I've been your host, Cam McCall, alongside Alan Cook. We've had Rob Warner down in the finish corral. I got to thank you for joining us out here. This has been the Outdoor Research Speed and Style. We will see you tomorrow for Red Bull Joyride. Joyride.